If I were to ask you what the most useless and pointless thing in TF2 is, many of you would probably say RANDOM CRITS! No, not random crits, but RANDOM BULLET SPREAD! No, not random bullet spread either. Valve anti-G. Good shot, mate! Nice shot! Nice Good shot! Good shot, mate! Good shot, mate! Alright, you make a point with that one there. But the second most useless and pointless thing has to be TF2's crafting system. It just kind of sits there on the menu doing nothing like the Swiss in a world war. For most people, they'll only come here to smelt duplicate weapons when they can't auto smelt it off scrap TF. But for a large handful of new players, or people who can't get their mom's credit cards, who don't have their backpacks built up and bundled with billions of bullshit, the crafting tab is this weird world of wonders, lurking with stupidity. Crafting was first introduced way back when in the war update of 2009. A big update that added a lot of iconic soldier weapons such as the Direct Hit, the Equalizer, in addition to Demo Knight as a subclass, along with the mainstay maps of Gorge and Double Cross. Tacked onto all of that, however, was the crafting system, which doesn't have as much flavor text compared to the rest of the update. Added to seemingly find a solution to the massive amounts of duplicate weapons sitting around in people's backpacks, which only had 200 slots at the time, only to be crafted into scrap metal. Pretty humble beginnings for what would be the startup of a full-fledged economy. Although you can see the emergence of some stupid stuff, such as the need to give up more items to receive one item, RNG to get said item, and rather expensive crafting costs, as for recipes, there was none. You had to figure them out on their own, as there was no preset list for specific weapons as well. You only had access to 25 possible craftable weapons and 22 possible craftable hats. You more than likely had the weapon you needed due to the drop chance being higher, and although there were 22 craftable hats, there already existed 9 hats that could only be found through drops that were always deemed to be more respectable and profitable. Even if you did smelt weapons down into the scrap and then into refined metal, you still had limited backpack space since backpack expanders weren't introduced until the Australian Christmas update a whole year later. A shaky start to be sure. In today's time, however, the use of crafting is pretty unheard of. You'll rarely ever see anyone in chat craft anything, and if they do, it's usually met with puzzled looks due to the fear of price of the product. Most people prefer the trade with keys, the mainstay currency of the game, but a few newer players still cling to crafting hats, weapons, and scrap, only to be told how stupid the system is after. But if you're a new player who can't afford to snag mom's credit card to spend the big bucks on cool cosmetics, <coughs> then you're screwed with the system in place. Doubly so if you want any of the mass weapons of destruction like the Jag, Power Jack, or Soda Popper right away, or want to practice basic game mechanics like rocket jumping or sticky jumping. Then tough luck, Buttercup, because you're looking at losing two other weapons so you can trade for one. But in this hypercall situation I've schemed up, you've only seen the game for like six hours. You've got no idea what backpack.tf is, and you think trading can only be done via people on the same server as you. Assuming you can even trade being a free-to-play and all. So you'll most likely want to make a rocket jumper for yourself. Requiring six random weapons for one reclaimed metal, and extremely odd requests for several pairs of shoes. If you think that's absurd, what if you want to craft those man treads? That will cost you one whole refined. That's 18 other weapons. Plus, you'll still need the gunboats, a much better and versatile secondary choice as well. Without a doubt, however, the most outlandish crafting recipe has to go to the Solemn Vow. You are needing one reclaimed metal, which a majority of weapon recipes require, and an Olympic swimming pool portion of piss. You need not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight fucking Gerardis to craft the father of modern medicine. So, you're a new player who doesn't know about trade sites or trading and lacks the sheer mass of molten metal needed to make the munitions you want. What else can you do? People tend to criticize and complain about cash being coughed up to open crates, loot boxes, happy meal boxes, whatever. However, the true RNG of profit didn't come out in the 2013 Man Economy update, but in the 2009 War update, shockingly enough. If you wanted to minimize the cost of crafting ever so slightly, or actually make a profit through it, you have to use crafting tokens. Crafting tokens are essentially placebo parts that are meant to fill in a specific role to help create a final recipe. You can have free soldier weapons to make a soldier class token, and free random primary weapons to make a primary slot token. Combine both the soldier token, primary token, and a single piece of scrap metal, and you'll receive a random soldier primary. Oh, that's not the one we need. And here's the real issue with craft tokens. 
Although the overall general price of crafting a weapon may be lowered, it is completely random what you can get. This includes weapon reskins, but doesn't include stock weapons, meaning you have a 1 out of 8 chance or a 12.5% chance to actually get the rocket jumper through this method. If you get it first try, congratulations! If not, tough luck, should've just gone with that slightly more expensive default recipe. Another con of the tokens is what happens if you have leftovers. With every other basic crafting recipe, there is a way to revert it back to a prior form for an even cost. One refined metal can be turned into free reclaimed, which can be turned back into scrap metal once again. But if you have three crafting tokens, which cost nine weapons to make, you can then revert those crafting tokens back into a single reclaimed metal, which only costs six weapons to make. What happens to the extra three weapons? Just like where I was on June 12, 1994, no one knows. There is one bonus that crafting through tokens has that the plain old recipe simply doesn't, being the ability to craft weapon reskins in TF2. This always seems strange to me that you can't normally craft weapons such as the Maul, Opera Hand, or the Sharp Dresser, but you can through dumb sheer luck. As a result, these craft weapons typically sell for a bit more than your small share of scrap. A crafted Opera Hand and Maul currently goes for 4.30 for your refine, and a crafted Sharp Dresser for 3.77 refine. Of course, the actual chances of getting these three weapons are 12.5% for the Opera, 16% for the Sharp Dresser, and an incredibly small 7.63% chance for crafting them all. For reference, the chance of getting an unusual from a crate is 1%, and an Assassin tier item is 5%. Both provide a lot more bang for your buck. What if you wanted to craft a cool chapeau to cover up your cranium, for clout or cash? Still not worth crafting. Creating a craft hat costs free refine, which is equal to 54 weapons. And that hat can be for one class, all classes, or some classes. And also completely random. You can improve the chances of what hat you want by adding an additional refine in a class craft token to get a random hat for that class, increasing the total cost to 75 weapons. Currently, there are a total of 619 current craftable hats in the game, if I did my math correctly. Out of those 619, only 74 have crafted hat prices above free refine, ranging from a measly profit of 1 scrap to a decent profit of 14 refine, depending on the cosmetic and the current market value. As a result, you have an 11.95% chance of making a profit by crafting hats alone. So, if you got a real gambler's gate, then go for it, I guess. However, even in the situation that you roll triple sevens on all your craft hats to maximize profit, you still have the issue of trying to find a buyer. Most people see that extra line of text and get really turned off about it, like having a live laugh love poster on the wall. You could potentially quick sell the hat, however you're looking at even further loss for profit. So, even when it is worth it, it's still not exactly worth the time or hassle. Oh boy. As a refresher, the reason why crafting sucks is the incentives are negligible and non-existent, the sheer amount of resources required for such a simple thing, the extremely lucrative costs that hurt people who need it the most, there's little payoff or reward for actually crafting, and the overall backwards-ass system with little logic. That being said, there are some, and I do mean some, good things crafting does allow, however such as it literally creating the economy. Attempts to allow new players to gain whatever they want, keyword there being attempts. Puts a personalized touch on items. Craft numbers, I just find them cool and neat, they're there. The ability for newer players who don't have access to all the weapons, selectively choose and create which ones they want is a good idea on paper. However, the need to give up six other weapons to create one reclaimed metal plus whatever random thing it needs is really, really stupid. Crash the price like it's 2008 to only needing scrap metal instead. No recipe should require more than three weapons for the result of one. And the real big change to try and make crafted items, especially hats, worth it, give them their own unique quality rather than the plain old yellow text. Maybe like a nice cyan? Why not? There you go. Look at that. Lovely. This new crafted quality wouldn't really do anything aside from telling you the item is crafted, but I mean, we got vintage items, and all they tell you is that the item is old, so... 
However, it would expand on the niche that is crafted items as a whole, slightly increasing all crafted items overall value ever so slightly. Most weapon qualities in the game do absolutely nothing but have a mere cosmetic change attached to them. Genuine, vintage, haunted, even collectors, as pricey as they are, are nothing but cosmetic changes. Yet, the prices and the markets for said colored techs do exist. Is it a good fix? Not really. I can't exactly fix a public market pricing. Only quote unquote influence it by making the goods more appealing and eye catching. Is this even an entire problem that needs to be fixed though? Maybe not the value of crafted cosmetics, but the sheer lunacy and lengths you have to go through to avoid loaning a weapon most certainly is, as it only exists to hurt new players from playing and learning about the game. Still, that's just one solution in a sea of spectators. Surely someone will say another one in the comments section below. Despite its serious flaws and shortcomings, TF2's crafting system is still rather unique. While most other games would simply have all the guns available at the start or have the player progress through unlocking them, TF2 awards and rewards players for playing the game with the chance to gain more of whatever they want out of it. New players have the option to try out and get weapons that fit their playstyles, and experienced players can still craft cosmetics so they can have clout and contain their cravings. Not to mention the slew of rare unique items, only given out by crafting them such as the HHH, the Saxon Hail Mass, or Spine Chilling Skulls. Even in the past, there were special rewards for crafting, such as the Bread Box, Pile of Curses, or the extremely lucrative Golden Wrench. It's a somewhat sad but somber send-off to his system and what it should have been. 